do verse by verse of Romans chapter 7 and look at why your ex won't leave you alone. When you got saved, you were divorced from your sinful flesh. You lived for the flesh. You wanted to please it and pet it and give it everything it wanted. But now, since you are saved and part of the bride of Christ, your ex, the flesh, still comes back calling. Calling over and over again because, number one, he used to have dominion over you. He used to control every part of your life. And now he sees you living for God and the happiness you have and your liberty in Jesus Christ. But look at Romans chapter 7 and verse 1. It says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. So the law had dominion over you until you believed the gospel. But now you are no longer under the law but under grace. And when you got saved, your flesh died with Jesus Christ and you were free to remarry Jesus Christ. Romans 7, 2. For the woman which hath, notice that word hath, she present tense has an husband. No divorce has taken place. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Now Romans 7 is showing us about how when we get saved, we, we become dead to the flesh and are able to marry Jesus Christ. It's not about rules on divorce and remarriage. It's using the husband and wife relationship as an illustration. If a woman is married to a man, she's bound to him. And there are grounds for divorce in the Bible, but if a man hasn't done anything to give her grounds for divorce, she is bound to him until he dies. And here are two grounds for divorce in the Bible. In Matthew 19, 9, it says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. So if your spouse commits fornication, steps out on you, then that's grounds for divorce. Uh, if you divorced and remarried, it wouldn't be a sin. 1 Corinthians seven fourteen through 15 For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called, you as, called us to peace. So you're not under bondage if your spouse departs from you. So fornication and desertion are grounds for divorce. That doesn't mean you should divorce. That doesn't mean you have to divorce. But if those things happen, if you divorce and remarry, you haven't sinned. And you won't have two living wives because you were loosed from the first one in the eyes of God. And we aren't overlooking the fact that God hates divorce and the fact that divorce without the grounds for divorce is a sin. But God gives grounds for divorce. Now, Romans 7, 1 through 3. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound to the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Notice it said... While her husband liveth, she be married to another man. She shall be called an adulteress. And many will use this to teach that if you remarry, then you'll have two living wives or two living husbands. But these verses aren't talking about divorce and remarriage. There isn't a divorce in the context. She never divorced the first husband. The woman which hath an husband, as the verse said, she stepped out on him and joined flesh with another man. Joining flesh with another person makes you one flesh. 1 Corinthians 6.16 says, What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. So if a person steps out on their spouse and commits adultery, their spouse is loose from them, because flesh was sundered from flesh when they joined flesh with another person in the affair. 
Romans 7, 3. So then if while her husband liveth, notice her present husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. So there you have a third case where it's fine to remarry, and that is if your spouse dies, it wouldn't be a sin to remarry. And some pastors teach that a man can't remarry after divorce until his spouse dies. And so if a 25-year-old man gets a divorce, he must go without sex until his wife dies, which could be the rest of his life. So for the rest of his life, he will struggle with lust. Uh, Paul said it's better to marry than to burn. And that pastor is bringing uh, grievous burdens on people that he wouldn't even live with one of his fingers. Uh, it, you're putting a grievous burden on someone to tell the 21-year-old kid or someone that's young that they can never remarry again until their spouse dies. Now, Romans 7, 4, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So when you get saved, your flesh dies. You were stuck to your flesh before you got saved. However, after you believe the gospel, the Lord performs an operation on you where he cuts your soul loose from your flesh. And this is called the spiritual circumcision. And since you are loose from the flesh, now you can marry another, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the flesh no longer has dominion. And he gets upset about this because the flesh wants what the flesh wants. So your ex comes back to bug you every day. He wakes you up at night. He tries to make you listen to filthy music, watch dirty movies, fornicate, get drunk, smoke pot. He wants to have fun all the time and he doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to provide for his own so he's worse than an infidel. You were shacked up with him for so long and you know how he is. Number two, your ex drug you down. Have you ever been around someone who was a great person until they got with some low life? Then everything about them began to get worse and worse, and that is how you are when you stay cuddled up with the flesh. It drags you down. If you're saved, you have been divorced from the flesh. So quit trying to watch after the flesh and pet it and take care of it and call it to see how it's doing. Quit visit, visiting it at the hospital when it's sick. Quit going to its birthday party. Quit going to its parents' house on Christmas. You're with the Lord now. He's a jealous God that doesn't want to share you with the flesh. So quit answering phone calls from the flesh. Quit giving him visitation rights with the kids. Take down any Facebook pictures of you in the flesh. The Lord doesn't want to be reminded that y'all were once together. So all those pictures on Facebook of you flipping a bird and drinking alcohol need to be taken down. Romans 7, 5 says, for when, we were, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. The motions of sins. The law is an unwavering standard. It never bends for you. Uh, living for sin brings death in both the lost person's life and the saved person's life. It brings forth fruit unto death. Even when you are alive, sin makes everything around you die. Your relationships suffer. suffer. Your testimony suffers. Romans 7, 6, But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So your marriage to the flesh was an abusive relationship. Your members brought forth fruit into death because the flesh only cared about itself. But now, once you have been saved, you are delivered from the law of the flesh and we need to serve in newness of spirit. This means you serve because you want to. You choose the Lord Jesus Christ over the flesh because you want to. Uh, he doesn't want to force you to be in fellowship with Him. He doesn't want to force you to not be giving into the flesh. If you're in a relationship with somebody, do you want to have to force that person to quit getting back with their ex, or do you want them to voluntarily stay away from their ex? When you lived for the flesh, it got to a point where you were serving 
because you were in bondage to the flesh. You thought you had control of sin, but it had control of you. You thought you could leave at any time, but really you couldn't. And God's laws shows you where you're wrong. There is always that person who tries to wake you up out of your messed up relationship with your ex. Romans 7, 7 says, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So it isn't the law's fault that we sin. God's law shows us we're sinners, and it is our schoolmaster. You wouldn't have known lusting was wrong unless there was a law that said, Thou shalt not covet. But when there is a law against something, you're more tempted to do it. Just like Adam and Eve had plenty of things to eat, but Eve still chose to eat off the tree she wasn't supposed to. Even though all the trees were pleasant to the sight. So don't go running around on the Lord with the flesh. The Lord has unlimited stuff that is pleasant to the sight. And he's got be something better than a 401k or a cabin in the mountains or a good savings account or any type of financial security. He has a mansion in heaven. An inheritance up there reserved for you. Don't go running around in the flesh on the weekends. Uh, stay with God. Stay in fellowship with God. If we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We need a daily confession of sin, daily prayer, daily Bible reading. Stay in fellowship with God. And don't go running around with the flesh all night. Romans 7, 8 says, But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. That word concupiscence is your extreme evil lust you have. And the flesh will tempt you with evil things, trying to get you to do things all the time, trying to get you to run around on the Lord behind his back he'll say he won't know about it or something like that sin seems more pleasurable and tempting because there is a law against it and that is why the more you sin the more evil sins you will begin to pursue because it's all for a thrill but without the law sin was dead before you had an understanding that you could break a law against god your sin had no effect to you you hadn't yet reached the age of accountability so if you had died before reaching the edge of accountability, even though you hadn't believed the gospel or gotten saved, you would have went to heaven. But the moment you realize you're a guilty sinner, you need to be saved. You need to believe the gospel. And that's just like the average abusive relationship. Your relationship with the flesh started out okay. Because... Romans 7, 9 says, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. You were alive without the law once. For example, my two-year-old has never believed the gospel, but she is safe. She would go to heaven when she died. She's alive without the law. She knows when she does wrong, but she has no idea that she has broken the laws of God. And when the commandment comes, sin revives and she will die spiritually. She will have to be born again. And she'll have to be divorced from the flesh. Right now it's okay with her. But when the, when the commandment comes, sin is going to revive and she's going to die spiritually. She's going to have to be born again. She's going to have to be divorced from the flesh so she can marry Jesus Christ. And just like your abusive relationship starts out okay but then you see the true colors when you see how bad that person actually is when you see that flesh for what it is Romans seven ten and 11 says in the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death for sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me once you realize your guilt of sin you're in for it it slew you. Romans seven twelve. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. The flesh is deceiving. The law is holy, and just, and good. Notice it isn't, it isn't the law's fault that you sinned. 
the problem is you can't keep all the commandments all the time and the commandments make them make sin seem more tempting Romans 7:13 was then that which is good made death unto me God forbid but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful so the commandments will make sin appear sinful the Bible makes sin appear sinful but the devil has devices to make sin seem less sinful. Just like when you hang around your ex, you, you got so used to him. They, all the stuff that he was doing, you become desensitized to all those bad things. You didn't see them bad anymore. But when you're around the Lord Jesus Christ, you realize your guilt of sin. You realized you were a sinner. You realized those sinful things you were doing. Uh, he made sin appear exceeding sinful. Romans seven fourteen. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So God's law is spiritual. The law in your members is carnal. And Paul admits that he is present tense carnal and still sins after he's saved. He will go on to describe the war going on between him and the flesh. Some people have a war going on with their ex. They can't get them to leave them alone. They can't get them to quit calling. They can't get them to quit coming to the house and sending flowers to their office. And this is the struggle of every Christian with the flesh. You want to do right, but sometimes you end up doing wrong. See, Paul is talking about how he now hates sin, but he still ends up sinning. He said, what I hate, that do I. Romans seven sixteen, if I then, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. So it isn't the law's fault that you break it; it is sin in you that's at fault. He consents unto the law that it's good. It's not the law's fault. Romans seven seventeen. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. The law is good, the flesh is bad. After you are born again, it is no longer you that sins, but sin that dwelleth in you. Because once you are saved, your soul is given the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ and no longer has sin imputed to it. Your soul has been cut loose from your flesh. Your sins aren't applied to the soul when you sin. When you sin, it isn't the new man in you that sins. It's the old man. Romans 7, 18, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Jesus Christ is always present with you. There's always a way to escape the temptation. There's always a way to escape what the flesh wants you to do. He's living in you and has power to help you overcome the temptation of the flesh. Jesus Christ is living inside you. And there is nothing good about the flesh. People who spend all their time trying to make their flesh look better than everyone else's are just wasting their time because it's going back to the dust. But Paul says how to perform that which is good, I find not. And this just describes Paul's struggle with his flesh. The greatest Christian who ever lived struggled with the flesh. That was the Apostle Paul. Romans 7.19 says, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Uh, have you ever decided one night that the next day you were going to do all these things for the Lord and then you get up the next day with a headache and a million things present themselves to you that need to be done? And that's kind of what he's saying here. We have it in us to want to do good if you're saved, but it takes hard work to beat down the flesh and do it. Romans 7.20 Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. The new man can't sin it's sinlessly perfect, but your flesh still sins. You have two natures. Romans 7.21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Even when you do good, you still have the flesh that you had to beat down to do good. And the flesh rises when you try to read the Bible. He will remind you of the good times that you and him had together, all the cheap thrills, all the sin and temporary pleasures that only last for a season. He'll tell you about all the good times that... He claims are good times. And then he had you stranded on the side of the road. He doesn't remind you about that. Or in the hospital or in jail or with your kids taken away or in an alley somewhere shooting up. 
He doesn't remind you about those things. He reminds you about the temporary thrills that you had together. The pleasures of sin that only last for a season. Romans 7.22 says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So the inward man is the new man. He's sinless. He has the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. 1 John 3, 9 says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. And many will use that verse to prove that a person who sins isn't truly born again, but they have no idea what they're talking about. The one who cannot sin is the new man within you. But your flesh isn't born again. He's not the one that's born of God, so he still sins. But now once you're saved... The new man in you, he's born of God, he can't sin. Your soul has been cut loose from the flesh, so anytime you sin, those sins aren't applied to your soul like they were before you were saved. Your flesh isn't born of God, so it still commits sin. Your flesh is wicked, and your parents can't stand him. He's disobedient to parents. He can't hold down a job because he won't get out of bed. He loves the atmosphere of the last days because he is a lover of his own self. He is one of those people who has a self -a selfie of himself as the wallpaper on his iPhone. He's that guy. Uh, Romans 7.23 says, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So the law of sin in your members fights the law of God in your mind. And this is part of the Christian war. You have to fight him. The flesh is at war with you. Paul says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And whether you want to admit it or not, the flesh has beaten you many times. You've lost the war. You've lost some of the wars. Uh, you, you have to reckon him dead. He's a walking zombie, and you just have to nail him back to the cross because he died on that thing when you got saved. You have to put your foot on his face and push him back into the grave and then cover it back up with more dirt, and then you need to put stacks of Bibles and biblical hobbies on top of it so that it, he can't get back out. Then get on your knees on top of it and pray. Uh, but Paul, he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul wants a new body. That is why he said, Who's going to deliver, deliver him from this body of death? He's looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ because he knows our vile body will be fashioned like unto the Lord's glorious body and we will no longer have to worry about sin. We'll no longer have to worry about putting the flesh back in the grave. Romans 7.25 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin. And this just goes to show that you are going to sin until you get a new body. Paul said, but with the flesh, the law of sin. He still struggled with sin. And this is no excuse to sin. This doesn't mean we should give in. It's just motivation to fight. This doesn't mean we don't have free will. A guy sent me a message one time and he said, if, if we have free will, then why can't we quit sinning? But you're forgetting every single sin you commit, you had the option to not commit that sin. But this has been Romans chapter 7, and we've looked at why your ex won't leave you alone. And what you need to do is quit answering his phone calls. Quit visiting his house. Quit letting him in when he knocks on the door. Uh, quit opening his letters. Quit receiving his gifts. Uh, beat the flesh down. Reckon it dead. Uh, push the flesh back into the grave. Nail it back on the cross. Do whatever you got to do to keep your fellowship right with the Lord Jesus Christ.